Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the volume and surface area of a cube. The technical name for a cube is a hexahedron. It's a space figure where all the faces are congruent squares. It's really a special um, case of a box or a rectangular prism, which we talked about in the other videos. So if we want to talk about the volume of a cube, that has dimensions s by s by s, we can think of multiplying the length times the width times the height, just like we do in a normal box. That's going to give us s times s times s, or s cubed, for the volume. We can also observe that each side of the cube is going to have an area of s squared, but we have six different sides, so the surface area is going to be 6s squared. So let's use these formulas. In this example, we're asked to find the volume and surface area of a cube, and it's labeled to have a dimension of 5 feet, which since we're told it's a cube, means that it has dimensions of 5 feet along every edge. So we're going to use the formula for the volume of a cube. You could use the formula for the volume of a box, length times width times height, it's going to work out the same. But in the case of a cube, all we have to do is take that one dimension, 5, and cube it. Raise it to the third power. So the volume is going to be 5 to the third power, which is going to be 125 cubic units, in this case cubic feet. So there's the volume of that cube. Now let's find the surface area. So again, the surface area is six times the area of one side, because all six sides have the same area. The area of one side is 5 squared, or 25. So the surface area is 6 times 25, which is going to be 150 what? What would the units be? Well, since we're talking about area, it's always going to be square units, right? So square feet, 150 square feet. Let's work backwards a little bit. What if I told you that a cube has a volume of 1,000 cubic meters, and I asked you to find its surface area? So we're still going to need the volume and surface area formulas, but we're going to use them a little bit differently. So if I tell you the volume is 1,000 cubic meters, then I'm giving you the V in the volume equation and asking you to find S. So 1,000 is equal to s cubed. So we're looking for a number that you multiply times itself three times to give you 1,000. One way to find that, or at least approximate it, is just to start listing cubes. 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and so on. Eventually you're going to get to 10 cubed, which is 1,000, and then you know that s is equal to 10. What would the units be? Well, if the volume is in cubic meters, then the length of an edge is going to be in meters. It's a linear measurement. So s is going to be 10 meters. You can also do this on your calculator. Calculators normally do have the ability to take cube roots. So what you're going to want to look for on your calculator would be something like xth root button. I'm looking for the cubed root of 1000. So I would hit 3, and then I would have to hit, the, on my calculator, the xth root button is actually above another um, function. So I have to hit second, then the x the root button, then type in a thousand, and then hit equals, and then you'll get 10 that way as well. Okay, so now that we found that s is 10, we're not quite done yet because we need to find the surface area. So we're going to plug into the surface area formula. So we have capital S, the surface area, is equal to 6 times little s squared, or 10 squared. So that's going to be 6 times 100, which is 600, and the units are going to be square meters this time because area is always in square units. Let's look at one more question about cubes. It says, if you double the length of the edge of a cube, how many times greater is the volume of the new cube than the volume of the original? How has the surface area changed? In this case, I'm just going to keep the dimensions of my cube as s. When I double the dimensions, I now get a new cube. I'm going to just draw a little 
sketch of a larger cube here. My larger cube has dimension 2s. So what would its volume be? Well, its volume would be whatever the length of the side is to the third power. What does that mean? That means 2s times 2s times 2s. So that would be two, you can rearrange the commutative property of multiplication tells us we can do two times two times two times s times s times s. So that's gonna be two times two times two is eight s to the third power. Notice that that's eight times as big as the volume of this one. This one had a volume of s cubed. This one has a volume of eight s cubed. So it's eight times as big. So the answer to the first part is eight times. Now they also asked us how the surface area would change. So let's look at the formula for the surface area. The surface area of the smaller cube is going to be 6s squared according to the formula. The surface area for the larger cube we need to figure out by plugging in 2s instead of s. So the surface area is going to be 6 times 2s squared. Well, that's 6 times 2s times 2s, which is 6 times 2 times 2 times s times s, which is going to be, let's see, 24s squared. So how does this compare? The surface area of the smaller cube was 6s squared. The surface area of this new larger cube is 24s squared. If you want to know how many times greater it is, divide it. What's 24s squared divided by 6s squared? That's just going to be 4. So the surface area is 4 times as large when you double each of the dimensions. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.